But Dora hits 28 and Ubuntu 1804 is out. GIMP 2.10 has finally been released and GNOME 3 has memory issues. Fail overflow, penguins, up the switch. That's right. They're going to get some Linux, Sonic, and Pi based. Pokédex, no Vegeta. It is not a Pokemon. What it is, it's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. That's right. We're going to sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and just kind of have a chat about some of the nifty, neat, nay, um, interesting things we found going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant, uh, Hollywood Jill in LA, bringing it up, bringing it up. And uh, on the island from Britannia, that is one unaccounted for, who confuses people on YouTube with speaking with his fancy American accent. And uh, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I'm not making that up. That's a real thing. No, that wasn't my idea. <laughs> 100% real thing. Before we get into this business, we'd like to play a bit of catch up, no mustard, just catch up of what's going on in each other's life organs. Um, short and sweet. I got an email from Farrell. You know, I am still on my, um, what would you call it? My Tomb Raider adventure. Mm-hmm. And uh, Farrell and I have re- reached the point of our relationship. Where we're like, okay, we want to reproduce this. So <laughs> they are genuinely. <laughs> collecting a data spec of like how exactly is your box put together so stay tuned for those <laughs> updates uh also i bought a harmonica but that was for devious reasons and i'm not <laughs> going to get into that because reasons joe what's going mm-hmm. on Oh, um, well, last Saturday we had our Linux Chicks LA uh, meetup installing a um, web server with LAMP, and it went beautifully. We had four new people to Linux, so I was very excited about that, and two of them ladies, so that always makes me very happy. And um, I also, I've installed Ubuntu on several several rigs, but uh, my full install of Ubuntu 18.04 on one of them finally got Tomb Raider running. So that made me very happy on my NVIDIA card. <laughs> right on. What's up in right. Space Britannia? Well, over here, we're running Solus. Yes, mm. we're running off the M.2 uh, mm. SSD now, which is uh, all nice. And there's certainly... Um, well, there's definitely the psychological factors. It's like, oh, everything is so quick because it's new. But it is actually much faster. We're talking mm-hmm. read speeds of about two gigabytes per second on average. So that's pretty good. Uh, feeling really, really happy about that. Also really happy that the uh, OCZ Vertex 3 is probably not going to die on me anytime soon <laughs> because it's out of the box now. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> throw, Yay. Throw, throw a wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That that drive has survived for mm-hmm. about seven years now, so it's it's doing good. It's beating the odds. I, I feel you on that. One of the things that is definitely new in the world of Linux is Fedora 28, mm-hmm. the workstation. Mm-hmm. It's out. Milady 28. This thing, and it's got some surprisingly, oh, I don't want to be negative, uh, things that make it usable. Is that mm-hmm. a mainstream mm-hmm. appeal? Yes. Because, yes. I, I mean, listen, man. I mean, first and foremost, improved emoji support, because that was totes holding some people back from Fedora adoption. <laughs> uh, Thunderbolt support, I can dig that. That's the thing. Third party repos, that's in there. We're talking Steam, Chrome, NVIDIA, out of the box experience with that. I, I think the Fedora, everyone, you need to be careful because people might mistake this for a desktop operating system. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, they've also implemented uh, VirtualBox guest editions installed by default when you install it in a virtual machine, which is really nice. So it makes it easier to cut and paste and, and resize the windows. And um, I was really enjoying um, playing with this release. Um, um, it's one of the most beautiful implementations of the GNOME 3.28 desktop to date. It really is. And um, the use of theme size of icons and layout is one of the best of any distro. So it's one of the one of the best gnomes that I've ever ever used, honestly. <laughs> so that All was right. really awesome. <laughs> uh, the thing about this uh, particular release that piqued my interest was the third party repositories. Like, oh yeah, now you can enable by uh, enable them by default when you launch GNOME Software three twenty eight uh, for the first time. It gives you a little alert and it says, yeah. 
we can install uh, Google Chrome and we'll set up the repo. We can install PyCharm, which is a Python IDE. I'm sure Strider would be ecstatic if he cared about Fedora. And the NVIDIA proprietary drivers and, of course, the Steam client, because let's face it, if you have a Linux distro in 2018, current year argument, uh, you kind of want Steam to work. So, yeah, Fedora is doing good on that. I wonder if they're using um, Negativo 17's Steam implementation, but whichever the case it is, mm -hmm. uh, they basically actually have a lot of mainstream appeal with this release, and I'm very happy about that. I just wish that they offered that very same, you know, feature of enabling the third-party repos in something else other than GNOME. Because GNOME has kind of yes. pooped on its huh. audience lately, so... It is true. Um, they've added yeah. <laughs> a lot of neat things with this. And somebody who's been using Fedora since Core not, you know, Core 1, mm -hmm. when it was still called Core, the it just seems bizarre to be able to install NVIDIA drivers, <laughs> like, by enabling a repo. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Strange yeah. times. So maybe Fedora's not your bag. Uh, you're, you're more of the Ubuntu. A lot of people have rolled out to the 1804 LTS, which I highly encourage everyone, please blindly upgrade to 1804 or install it, get, get all of the bugs hammered out so I can do it when they do their point release. Um, well, it is indeed 1804. It came out and it's the very first LTS since, uh, 1004 to feature GNOME as the default uh, desktop environment. Of course, this is GNOME 2, the one that everyone likes. Thank this you. is GNOME 3. And um, the fine folks at uh, OFG Ubuntu have put up a, a little article together. Say They called it the 11 things to do after installing Ubuntu 1804 LTS. And basically what it boils down to is stop using GNOME. Because if you're using GNOME, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can go through this list and it'll give you all the things yeah. that you need to do. But if you don't use GNOME, turns out you don't really need to do much before it's usable. That's it. Okay, now <laughs> I, I got to play, play Flying Spaghetti Monsters yeah. advocate on this. Uh, isn't the default GNOME? Yes. So this makes a lot of sense to people who are installing it out of the box going, hey, this is my yes. default uh, mm -hmm. desktop manager, so maybe... This is a good thing, right? <laughs> it is a thing. I yeah. wouldn't say good. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jill, Jill, since you don't have, okay. like, unreasonable hatred for GNOME. Uh... <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, actually, um, in this article, it tells you, of course, to install the extra media codecs during installation, which uh, I always do, and uh, check for updates. And install Snaps via the Snap Store in the Ubuntu Software Center. That's, of course, new in this version. And then enable flat packs by installing additional software in the FlatHub repo. And um, what I'm a little bum bummed about is Ubuntu 1604 LTS upgrades to Ubuntu 1804.1 <laughs> won't be available until the end of July. I have to wait that long. <laughs> we all have to wait that long. Um, except unless you're me and I forced one of the installs <laughs> as soon as 1804 came out. And um, it had a few hiccups um, and broke a few libraries as expected, but actually had very few few issue, issues and it was actually um, a much better upgrade from four, from 1404 to 1604. So 1604 to 1804 was actually much smoother. So and I had yeah. <laughs> did you have any systems going from 1710 to 1804 or no, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm. And um but yes, uh as Ven said earlier, uh, uh I really don't love GNOME. <laughs> so the first thing I do when I do a do an install is sudo apt-get install Windowmaker, Flexbox, XFCE4, and an awesome desktop. So uh, those are what I use. <laughs> again, I have no irrational <laughs> hatred for GNOME and the way that uh, stock GNOME or later that it's kind of been um, unitified is a terror. I, I don't know if terror... PTSD or what I've launched that desktop <laughs> yeah. when I was like, we're getting 413 XFCE up and running out of the repos. And I worked it to the point where I had to use that three minutes. in that experience is like, 
that's not how this is supposed to work. That's not how any of this is supposed to work. It's like, ah, yeah, get yeah. no, uh, uh-uh. yes. Things were bouncing around <laughs> and saying disrespect. Yeah, uh, it was, it was terrifying. But yeah, uh, <laughs> right on. So no, no showstoppers, right, Jim? No, uh, uh-uh. uh. Hmm. Um, it, it worked. It actually, the upgrades were went pretty smoothly for me. <laughs> and it's still doing your standard thing, where it's going to just disable all of your PPAs, right? Yes. <laughs> Makes sense. That, yeah, to reinstall. <laughs> that's definitely a little bit of a pro tip for if you want to yeah. roll out immediately. Check if you're heavily, heavily, heavily reliant on the PPAs, because sometimes it takes a little while for that to get updated, and all that's going to get nope, and that could cause issues. I really try to minimize. You know, I'm basically Nvidia's PPA. Well, Canonicals it used to be Xorg, Edgers, Steam, Chrome. Yeah. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have like Frank's PPA of whatever <laughs> random moon library set up and installed. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, send us some feedback if you've had uh, plenty of joy or plenty of pain with that process. Again. Uh, oh, yes. This. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, their release cycle is breakneck. I mean, it seems like every <laughs> single week we're talking about a new update. And um, I'm just kidding. It's been like, what, six years? <clears throat> Six it's been years. A while. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks to Pat David and his small team of developers, he was he was even at uh, scale trying to get more uh, people to contribute to the GIMP project. And I and I, I know it was successful because he, he there were a lot more people contributing. So that's wonderful. And um I actually um I'm very excited about this being an animator and uh teaching animation and, and graphics. And um, um, I, I actually tested this with both the PPA install and the app image. And mm-hmm. actually, Empty had posted the app image in Discord. And it, the app image runs, it, it ran just as well as the PPA install. Hmm. But this, this is a huge release. And I, I can't go into every change that has been made because it's just too big. But the major changes for GIMP 2.10 is uh, are the four new interface themes: dark, which is the default when you launch it. Thank goodness, good for the, on the eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, dark, gray, light, and system. The icons are available in four sizes and will automatically scale for eight um, high DPI displays. That's they, awesome and they new. Will think <laughs> about doing it. They will will think about doing it. I'm no, I'm sure Ben's tested that. <laughs> I haven't yet. <laughs> but um, the color man- management is a core feature now. Uh, most widgets and preview areas are color managed with image previews, color, and pattern previews. And the the major, major, major um, upgrade image processing almost completely ported to Giggle. That's the generic graphics library, uh, GIMP library, which um, ch- made major changes, um, high bit depth support for processing many file formats, including PSD and TIFF, um, to 32 bit, which in the real world, you know, most people's images, um, only need to be 20, 24 bit, but the 32 is that extra eight bit for the alpha channel and for mm-hmm. us animators for doing compositing and green screens and, and, um, um, uh, blue screens and whatnot. That's that's pivotal. That's very exciting that 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 has been implemented. And there's a new uh, 64-bit fits images for um, um, HDR displays and multi-threading with multi-core processing. Um, that's nice. major. Um, it runs so much faster. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's not even comparable. I was actually, I did rendered some animations and um, it rendered, you know, literally like um, 99% faster. (laughs) It was huge. (laughs) That's definitely one of the things that you'll notice. um, Saving out ping files, especially with Mm -hmm. 16 available threads, a lot quicker. It doesn't take forever. A lot quicker. And um, the selection stuff, that's good. Uh, A lot of this stuff, I'm like, oh, I'm glad that's in there. It's beyond my pay grade because I just do simple shooping. Pedro? (laughs) Yeah, no, I saw uh, Jill's whole thing in the show notes. uh, I I tried the app image. I really like the new toolbar icons in the dark theme. Those are neat. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You do well, run into some <laughs> like changing the icons. I, I had to change that back. I know a lot of people have gotten onto me. Like, why do you don't you run it in? Because there's a mode that contains it all. The Photoshop. Yeah, single mode. window mode. Single yeah. window mode. I was like, why don't you run Photoshop it? Photoshop mode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like I can't mm-hmm. run it in that. Why not? Because I've been yeah. running it in separate windows for 14 years. That's not something you reprogram your brain for. And yeah, new mm-hmm. icons. They look nice. Um, looking forward to it. Currently, right now. I'm not going to play with it. I know there's PPA available for it for the curious if you just want to put it on the system, but I am gearing up this box to move to 1804 eventually. So we're on PPA Frieza Tron 9000. Uh, I want to keep that app contained. Image. The app image works. I, I will try it. Uh, <laughs> again, I will try to keep yeah. that contained as he throws mm-hmm. it to Pedro again, attempting to get him to go into the next story. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let's say you've had. Uh, issues with certain cookies tracking something of what you do, and then you do a little Google search, and it shows results based on what that ki- uh, that cookie was uh, indicating that you like to watch. And maybe you were in a place where you didn't like that uh, particular activity to be on display. Well, the fine folks at, uh, uh, well, what's this person's name? doesn't say uh they call themselves containers everywhere and basically what they did Mm -hmm. was the exact same thing that they did with uh facebook a while back they containerized they let you download a little a little extension that would containerize everything that facebook would do and what they did is they took that and they brought it over to google say if you don't want google to track those amazon searches that you did last night at 3 a.m well now you can (laughs) So how does this prevent my ISP from collecting all this data again? It doesn't. Oh. Chip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> it doesn't. And I'm not going to bother using it. I like to Google all the things. <laughs> so, But I, I did like the Facebook <laughs> I like the Google suggestion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of the whole thing. I mean, I completely understand people are um, with their privacy. And I completely agree with you. With me... Um, I'm 100% because I know Googs is out there and they're like, hey, man, we want that sweet, sweet data. Here, here, here's some tools, but you got to give us some data because you're the product. I'm like, all right, I'm down with that. I, I understand this trade. They're not very Facebook mm-hmm. about it. You know, Goog, Googs comes up front with its message. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. we're a data mining company. It's like, all right, cool. Okay. Yeah. And isn't the mm-hmm. ultimate for a little bit of discussion, like the ultimate solution to this, if you don't want Google spying on you, is to just simply, uh, no, it's not, I, I can't say it's spying because they're not being uh, like, we're not spying on you. I'm spy, spy, like, uh, yeah, is it spying if they're coming, you know, up front, first thing out of the box and saying, yeah, we're going to collect all the information you give us? Okay. No. Yeah, I don't think it is. Right. If you don't want that happening, don't use their product question mark. You know, you got a yeah. yourself an Android <laughs> phone and you just go, yeah, no, uh, let's not use any of the Google services. Hey, man. That yeah. Android hey, phone man. got a Listen. heck of a lot Listen. less useful now, didn't it? You, you, I know yeah. this looks weird, but I have a big pager over here. That's why I keep looking over here. Um, you could put Sailfish on it because I know the podcatching app now works with our podcast. It does, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could still think. listen to uh, Linux Weekly Little Wednesdays on Sailfish if you mm-hmm. decided to go that route. Good or, luck. I, and, um, go ahead, Joe. You can also still listen to it on WebOS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Right. Potter podcast. <laughs> um, last week, we, we talked about the uh, terminal issue with GNOME Terminal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, and uh, well, mm-hmm. we've seen more than one story about uh, memory issues coming out from GNOME. Uh, there's been several uh, articles over the past couple of weeks saying, oh, GNOME 3 has a memory leak. And we've seen some people uh, on Discord go like, yeah, I kind of ran into that. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 I don't know. Wait, wait, I'm just see. looking at this and it's like not a memory leak. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to convince no. me that <laughs> this is just working like it's supposed to? Yeah, it is. Well, it's not supposed to work like this because this isn't that particular issue. This isn't that memory leak. Yeah, so 
the way that gnome handles certain things, it's not clearing up, uh, clearing after itself like it should. And in a regular memory leak, it's when something doesn't clear after itself because of a bug, because of some issue that's not supposed to happen. In this one, gnome is actually working as it's supposed to work. And it's just not doing a very good job of keeping his mm -hmm. uh, its uh, living quarters clean. So uh, this person, I can't, uh, I don't think I ever saw his name or her name or whatever the case may be. And they say that, um, well, there's a, a bit of a hammer, the big hammer, as they call it, mm -hmm. uh, that you can take to it because instead of just, you know, expecting the processes to handle the cleanup, it basically goes in, goes through all the processes and says, okay, I'm going to have to clean up all of their mess. Mm. And the cleanup is basically collect everything those processes left behind, put them in a big box and take a hammer to it. And that's what it does. And it helps. It's still not an ideal fix because it is very ham-fisted in its approach. But the simple fact that this is the best solution that they have to Gnome's memory issues right now kind of says a lot about Gnome itself, doesn't it? Well, yeah. Yeah, I think it says a lot on the tunes of just Linux and open sources. Okay, if you don't like it, why don't you just use another desktop manager? Yes. Uh, <laughs> hello, I, I'm Mathieu Commandant. <laughs> yeah. I really like the Gnome. <laughs> Pop OS, all the things. <laughs> Which dig, Jim? Yeah, and this is, yeah, this is exactly why I don't use no. It's 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 one of the main reasons because of this JavaScript engine bit rot, <laughs> and um, it slows down over time with memory fragmentation. Garbage gets full and then eventually pops or crashes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so it's 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 one of the reasons I've always found that that the more you use GNOME, the the slower it gets and 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 the slower my programs get. So. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I don't don't use it, <laughs> but they're trying to improve that, of course, <laughs> and uh, they'll eventually get there. <laughs> Damn, no, so yeah, it's not yeah. another memory leak; it's just an issue. Yeah, it's no an issue. No and they they have a fixed release cycle, so yeah, some stuff maybe should have been pushed out. Maybe some stuff is, but I mean, it's an actively developed project, and it's got a lot more people mm -hmm. behind it. Here comes some hate mail than like KDE, so. <laughs> <laughs> in a perfect world we'd all just use xfce4 so mm -hmm. that's ben's perfect <laughs> I act world oh <laughs> i actually still prefer the original xfc <laughs> it looks more like cde to me <laughs> i just like a desktop here's the thing and i've heard pedro say it when he was in his kde phase um it's like oh x crash not x itself but i'm using x as some component of the mm -hmm. desktop crash that makes me look so at people so sideways i'm like what what, what do you mean desktop crap what how <laughs> yeah yeah how <laughs> that, that, that's like foreign moon speak man like, that's not supposed to be a thing that ever happens it's like well you know um i like blinky wooshy notification stuff so i just live with it <laughs> I, I admittedly, the first thing I did when I installed Solus on this box was like, okay, let's get rid of all of the transparency, all of the animations, and let's just have Plasma 5 as neat and, you know, as usable mm -hmm. as possible. Tidy. And there's still a couple of mm -hmm. issues there, but those, well, those are plasma issues. It's like saying you got good, <laughs> the good type of cancer, man. Come on, let's just be honest. It's a benign tumor, come on. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> Um, Aww. each to their own though. Cause I mean, if gnomes your jam, you like gnome rock mm -hmm. on, rock on. I, it's just, uh, <laughs> Hey, that, that, that's the true, true. Uh, and no yeah. one's going to win that holy war. And that's not a hill I'm going to die on today. No. So, uh, it's a matter of choice. <laughs> last but not least, we got to talk about this, uh, fancy new uh, device that Nintendo just released called the switch. Wait a minute. That sounds like it's been out a while. What is this yeah, all about? Yeah, it's, uh, yes, it it's been out a couple of months, and it, all of a sudden it just became much more interesting because, as we talked about <laughs> last week, there was a bit of an issue with the uh, X1 um, SoC, and basically it's a hardware flaw, and if you, there's really no way to, you know, work uh, for the 
either Nintendo or NVIDIA to fix it without having to release a new iteration of the SoC. So the fine, fine folks at Fail Overflow, you may know him, uh, may know them as the uh, the people behind the PlayStation 4 Linux uh, debacle, mm-hmm. uh, which is a thing. It's still totally uh, being worked on, and they're making some really good progress with that. But thanks to this particular exploit with the X1 SoC, they got well, they got some plasma running on the Switch with Linux, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it's, it's awesome. just great to see. <laughs> and look, OpenGL accelerated. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I think it's cool that because of this uh, the Tegra ROM bug, that we we get to have Linux on the Nintendo Switch. Otherwise, it 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 may have never happened or happened a lot later. <laughs> so this is pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> and actually, M Fox Dog and R Theron had posted in dos- Discord that people were running Godot Engine on on mm-hmm. the Switch. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty awesome. It actually has 3D acceleration. That's insane considering how long ago the flaw was disclosed and how far they've already gotten with it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's one of the things you think uh, we were just talking about this on Saturday. And it's like, we're sure eventually in a month or so, what it was four days later. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Here you go. Put it out there. And (laughs) kind of to go back, what I said on um, Saturday was Nintendo's about to sell a gang of new switches to a customer base that really didn't care about switches up until about a week ago and it's like mm-hmm. oh wait a minute because yeah <laughs> now, I, i'm not saying there's any deception in that video whatsoever but i they, they showed you the highlights of what's possible right now keep that in mind yeah, yeah. you know you're not going to be what, what's that what size is the screen on the switch like it's uh, an eight uh, ish is that a seven point something or eight inches that's it's not... like the NVIDIA Shield tablet. Bad. Because, let's face it, that was a prototype. Be a fun little yeah. um, mm-hmm. homebrew piece of kit. Find them reasonably priced. Yeah. Going to be keeping an eye out for <laughs> that. Um, I think that's going to do it for our main news. But uh, what do we do? What do we do? We, we're going to shill. We're going to shill. <laughs> Actually, we're, we're, we're going to thank everyone who makes this possible. And by everyone who makes this possible, we're talking about the beautiful party patrons keeping us in business, keeping us from not reading mattress ads as much as Pedro is dying to. <laughs> I could use a new mattress, to be honest. It's like every two weeks, man. He's like, come on, take a mattress ad. I, I want to read. <laughs> Pedro needs a Casper. <laughs> and, then, and then he messes up here on the live show and admits the only reason he's been saying this because he wants free mattresses, man. Uh, come on. I thought I thought you were yes. better than that. <laughs> Look, if I'm shilling, I got to have something coming out of it my way. So. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Can, can we, yep, there we go. Shilling, big one. Yeah, so, yeah, free mattress, big one. 100%. <laughs> free mattress, big <penguin. laughs> He, he's like the tooth fairy, but with more free mattresses. Um, if, if you want to help out this nightmare tree, just head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Uh, hit the support button. We're going to get done with this quick. Uh, Patreon, you guys are keeping it honest, keeping us real. Uh, you get a bunch of cool rewards. That's not so much a donation as like buying into and becoming our bosses. We appreciate that. Libra Pay, Amazon affiliate links. Doesn't cost you anything. Hey, come on, do it. I do it for other shows. We got a wish zone thing. A lot of people have helped stick the studio together that we're broadcasting from. You guys did that. Made it possible a lot quicker than we planned. Newegg, Humble, PayPal, and even Magic Internet monies. But the cool part is we get to thank the people. So <laughs> Yes, we do. We got some new patrons yeah. this week. Jill and Jill, you even know one of them. In fact, I, yeah. know, I know a simple fact about one of them. But yeah. go, go ahead, Jill. Tell, who, who do we oh, have uh, um, in the uh, uh, roster? Nicole and and her boyfriend Albert are are new patrons. They're part of the Linux Chicks of Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and Nicole is one of our our most active uh, Linux Chicks LA members. So I was really excited about that. She got a good job, and that's what happened. She was able to donate. Nice. <laughs> Make it rain. So, well, I guess you should point yeah. out that um, with Patreon comes a gang of rewards. You get early access to a bunch mm-hmm. of our stuff, and you get access to our Discord. That's where us miscreants hang out the other six days of the week. And, um, Pedro, there's even an entire show that we do every week that's uh, just up on a customized RSS feed, right? 
Yes, there is. And it's the kind of show that uh, if for some reason you really like what we do and you kind of wish we didn't have a structure and we just talked about whatever, well, that's the show for you. If you like creeping on people, if you're into the voyeur, if you want everyone to be a fly on the wall at a production meeting where we're talking, that it's a 3% show, 90%, let's talk about DBZ Super and argue and research mm -hmm. when the movie versus um, <laughs> it goes off the road. Argue about dates and uh, yeah, basically call each other out. It's like, no, I'm going to Google that right now. <laughs> That, that's what you're in for with the pre pre super shows and the show that's not a show, but yeah, Nicole, thank you, Frostclaw, thank you, Jay Rulio, also increased mm -hmm. his pledge. Thank oh, you yes. for that. Yay. And I, awesome. I said this Saturday, and I, I want to say it again. Thank you, Chi, Chi Dean. Chi Dean's been mm -hmm. listening to our um, horse and buggy show, our, our crazy, crazy going on for mm -hmm. this and Saturday show for a long, long time. And I like clockwork can he. he shares it he retweets it and like that's awesome while, while we like the yeah. hearts of the plus ones they're kind of like thoughts and prayers equivalent and sharing the show I, I know trust me i fully understand if you're like i don't want anybody knowing i don't listen to this junk i understand that too <laughs> no. completely yep. behind you lgc cares okay <laughs> uh Time for a slice Kitty, of pie? tiny little slice of pie yeah yeah so just jump right it's just into the it. one story mm -hmm. so jill tell us about it <laughs> yeah, so this is basically how to build your own Pokédex. And Ooh. I had to actually <laughs> I had to go through this article thoroughly because I really don't know much about Pokémon. <laughs> so <laughs> Vegeta, it's a Pokémon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I I've, I've watched I I used to watch the cartoons, so I I knew that, but I've never really played the games much. Oh uh, wow, this anyways. is actually about Pokémon. All right, never mind. It's no, no, it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> sort of. So, the, yeah, so, sort of. This is so you can uh, build your own deep learning advice so you can you can uh, catalog and recognize a Pokemon that you find. And what's awesome to me, um, well, he used, of course, a Raspberry Pi um, um, with a, a touch screen and a camera. And you can also do this on your laptop as well. But for me, the, the big news here is that it, it, it uh, details in an easy to understand way how to install TensorFlow and Keras, um, mm -hmm. which is, is, is part of the uh, deep learning and uh, um, um, Internet of Things and uh, deep, deep learning how uh, deep learning works. And yeah, um, yeah definitely. Um, I actually uh, go to a big data. Uh, meetup and I'm going to be going to a big data convention and I actually even though I'm not using TensorFlow myself I actually in, learned how to install it as as well as Keras um, just just to learn um, how to how to do it and and um, um, get you know more proficient with it even though I probably would never use it myself except for 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 this project which is really cool that would tinkering. really be fun to find yeah. Pokemon yeah tinkering Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to learn how it works so that when I went to these conferences and uh, meetups that I would understand what they were talking about. And it has helped a lot. <laughs> yeah. And the so, big one here is that they're actually managing to do like uh, machine learning and image recognition in real time exactly. in a Raspberry in Pi time. with a camera. It's yeah. kind of impressive. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very... And what did what what did they decide to do it with? Well, let's create a Pokédex that can recognize Pokémons as you point the Raspberry Pi's camera at it. And they yeah. nailed it. They actually did it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and and what's neat is this will help people, you know, learn a little bit. Well, this is how how Google does it with their autonomous vehicles. Yeah. And this is how Nvidia is doing it with their supercomputer for autonomous vehicles. So this was just it, it's a really really nice uh detailed uh, manual on how to install it and for uh, uh doing a fun thing <laughs> finding pokemons <laughs> that's a good way to get into it tensorflow has always amazed me it's the vast cornucopia yeah. of nightmare fuel that thing has spit out over the internet yes it's like here recognize yes. this and you're like oh no it's like a geiger image I'm like oh what was that it was a kitty cat it's like all oh, right yeah um, oh it had a spot no it's a dog Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> pretty interesting stuff and hey man that's gateway hardware get them while they're young 
I mm-hmm. approve of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. That's going to be our slice pie. A uh, little bit of feedback this week, Pedro. Can people get a hold to us? Do, do they have to jump through hoops or do they have to sit through an app mattress ad? Uh, no, they have to do neither of those things. They can simply go to lazygamecast.com and hit the contact button. Pretty straightforward. There's even like a little form that you get to fill out if you'd like to get in touch with us. Mm-hmm. Just make sure to pick LWDW in order to send some feedback to this show. You can also send some hate mail to that Saturday show, What We Do. Always uh, looking forward to that one. Uh, you can ask some relationship advice. Jordan's always on hand for that. Uh, if you have some keys to give us, you can do that too if you're a game developer. We appreciate it very much. We are Linux Game. Hey, hey man, um, kind of as, as an aside, uh, did you see a developer actually sent three keys this week? Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. We, Through uh, Curator Connect, oh. too, which is amazing. We, we're on this Curator <laughs> Connect thing on Steam, which we half heartedly pay attention to, and we get these gangs of, of submissions because you get the email like I do. It's like, hey, you have a new key. Right, it's like one key. <laughs> Sometimes it's two. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. do you. You didn't. Okay, that's more confusing than one. One tells us that you didn't bother reading anything. Two mm-hmm. is just like, well, what's that for? Fortunately, yeah. there's a politely decline offer in there. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, awesome. Let's get into so, the feedback. This week, mm-hmm. uh, we have Shadeen. Uh, we mentioned him earlier. Thank you very much for all the, uh, the shares you've done for us, Shay. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's asked us a Bit of a favor. If it's possible, please mention this in a future episode. The Specky, that's the ZX Spectrum, though basic, contributed a huge amount to quote unquote PC gaming in the early days. And we all love the Amiga and the ST, the Atari ST, who could afford them back in the day. Uh, I know my parents couldn't. And the Specky is just as much a part of geek history. Thanks, guys. So, yes, uh, the uh, story that he's actually talking about is a Kind of a sad one. Uh, Rick Dickinson uh, died, <laughs> and he was the designer of the Sinclair Spectrum series. The ZX80, the ZX81, the ZX Spectrum, they were all designed by him. And it's even though it's a really short article, it actually uh, yeah. gives you a really nice background of uh, just what was going through their heads at the time. And, well, as someone uh, who was perhaps a bit too young at the time. I'm the youngest one here. Uh, uh, I didn't really get to experience the badness that were the ZX keyboards back in the day, back when, you know, that was the thing you could afford, that was the thing you could use. And, well, I, I've read the horror stories, I've heard people complain about them, but they were <laughs> done for the sake of cost saving. They were made really, really crappy so they could be cheap. That's my AARP yeah. renewal card. <laughs> so if you get off my lawn page. Oh, um, man, man. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely some sad news. And I, uh, yeah, the uh, really with the ZX anything, uh, the first thing anyone might think of is that was the most junk keyboard. Um, mm-hmm. If you could even call it that. <laughs> call um, it a keyboard. <laughs> that membrane push down kind of work, halfway worked. Fortunately, you know, I had a second by those times that, that was a bit old hat, but I got out. I was like, here, do you want to play with this? And I was like, beep, boop, boop. Okay, somebody else want this. Jill, did you? <laughs> I know micros were not really a thing in the States. So did you get a chance to uh, play with these? Yes. Um, I actually have one in my collection. Um, and it's one of my favorite uh computers because it was one of the lowest priced computers of the time but mm-hmm. still had a beautiful mm-hmm. modern de- design and um i have i of course had a commodore 64 which was was uh the us equivalent to the zx spectrum and um the commodore 64 had had really good keys on it but it wasn't very pretty looking <laughs> So the ZX Spectrum was awesome. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. ZX and ZX81. That dark times, but huh? (laughs) That's a shame. That's a bit of nostalgia. Yeah, and uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, sad to see stuff like that go. But yeah, uh, Mr. Dickinson uh, was—he was in his late sixties when he passed, and. I, for Aww. one, even though I never actually got to use any of the uh, ZX Spectrums at the time, mm-hmm. I like their design. It's uh, mm-hmm. I'm very much trying to 
uh, see if I can find a cheap uh, ZX Spectrum recreated, like the Bluetooth keyboard one that really no one wants, and it sometimes shows up on yeah. eBay for really cheap. I want to get one of those and put a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in it, just so it's an actual full-fledged thing in that teeny tiny case. I really want to do that. Yeah, and don't tell anyone you do that, because some of the hardware aficionados will hunt you down <laughs> for destroying it and putting a pie in it. And I'm like, no. No, it's the recreated one. It's uh, it's the one that's yeah. not actually a Spectrum. It's just a Bluetooth keyboard. Oh, they won't yeah, hunt yeah, you yeah. down. They will just mock you openly. Yes. It's like a yeah. poser, whatever. <laughs> okay, beautiful people. Uh, we're we're going to bounce out of here. We will see you next week. Uh, tune in if you're into Linux gaming. Believe it or not, we do a show about that on Saturdays, 9.30 Eastern Time. We'll be there. And uh, tomorrow hey. night, Jordan will be streaming <laughs> something. Hopefully, it will be terrifying. But let's roll those credits. And uh, thank you. <laughs> Yay, I remembered to make them. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> This was this show was a lot shorter this time. <laughs> yeah. uh, Forty-one minutes, so we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're getting there. I, I think we want to hit <laughs> somewhere roughly around there. Executive producers, we got regular producers. Our producers got producers. Yes, yes. beautiful. Producing the production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all you lovely people watching and listening to us right now, you're awesome. Mm -hmm. It's because of you awesome. that we're doing this show, and it's because of you that we have Jill on right now. It's because Aww. of you that I haven't had to take out a loan to keep this thing going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aww. Bye, chat room. Bye-bye.